It is human nature that he needs a greater power to obey and guidance. Because Allah created us so he knows all about us. Hence Quran has zikr of Allah so many times and into so much powerful way that we take a strong impression of Allah. Because when we have the correct impression of Allah, so we know that someone is always watching all of our deeds. And this impression keeps us away from Kuna. Ayatul Kursi The main theme of this passage, which we know as the verse of throne, is the oneness of Allah or Tawheed. Allah is being unlike any other beings because He knows everything and can do everything. Also, he has neither parents nor children. Similarly, Surah Ikhlas also states that he cannot be compared to anyone or anything. His throne signifies his absolute power over all as well as his absolute knowledge of everything. This passage teaches us the powers of Allah which are limitless in all aspects, thus clearly making the difference between him and his creation. This passage states all that in an authoritative tone that declares its teaching in a distinctive manner. It is a unique passage because it teaches us multiple articles of faith and believes in very few words. Other Quranic verses similarly teaches us same themes in detailed words and with logical reasoning along with their teaching such as Surah, Surah Al-Inam which gave us a logic that Allah cannot have a son as he has no wife. Surah Al-Inam Ayah number 101, 102 and 103 the main theme of this passage is the unlimited power of Allah that proves Tawheed. It describes how He created all things including the heavens and the earth from scratch. The Arabic word Badi means He who creates without any raw material to start with. It strongly refutes any concept of Him being a parent or husband when it is he who cannot even be seen by anyone. Another important aspect of this theme is fact that his knowledge is absolute. These arguments established him as the sole being to be worshipped. The teachings of this passage are the oneness of Allah, his powers as well as his person, which is beyond human comprehension. These are taught here in a distinctive manner that uses common logic so people may understand. It also explains how unlimited and absolute his power of creation and knowledge are, thus making it logical result that we should worship him only. This manner of explanation is distinct from other passages as they usually only declare or order men to worship him without giving any reason or logic. Surah Fusilat, Ayat number 37 The main theme of this passage is Tawheed or oneness of Allah which is being taught by explaining his powers. Throughout history, many people have begun worship the sun and moon due to their beauty or power. The Quran says that these are just signs of Allah who is the creator of all. Similar themes are found in many places in the Quran such as in Surah Rahman where Allah states that He has absolute power over all heavenly bodies. The teachings of this passage is presented through a distinctive manner 
of giving examples of his signs. Mankind should recognize the designer of all these and submit to his will. This is distinctive from other verses such as Surah Ikhlas where Allah states the theme of Tawheed but without explaining or using any example. Surah Shura, Ayah number 4 and 5 The main theme of this passage is Tawheed of Allah as everything is His property. His greatness and supremacy is evident by the fact that the heavens are bent and on the brink of falling into pieces due to the weight of the angels worshipping Him. It is no wonder that countless angels are continuously engaged in glorifying the name of Allah while seeking forgiveness for mankind. Allah Himself has ordered them to do so as only He Himself is full of forgiveness and mercy for His creation. Thus He has also ordered humankind to glorify Him and then ask for forgiveness as in many other verses in Holy Quran. This passage presents the great mercy of Allah by stressing on His supreme majesty. The angels not only to calibrate His praise and also pray for forgiveness for us because Allah Himself has ordered them. The greatness as well as mercy of Allah is presented here distinctively by first stating His being the owner and supreme lord of everyone and everything, yet his being kind to his creature. This is a distinct style from Surah Fatiha where Allah simply announces himself as merciful but doesn't discuss his rank and status. Surah Ikhlas, Ayah number 5 and 4 this surah is comprehensive summary of Tawheed. The theme clearly asserts him being the one and only God, thus negating any parenthood or kinship assigned to him by anyone. It identifies the very nature of Allah to be free from the phenomena of birth as he is not in need of anyone or anything. Allah's attribute as Samad mentioned here means he who doesn't need anyone rather everyone is in need of him. Also by saying that he is incomparable with everything. This surah negates all form of shirk. Teachings of the passage The surah class presents the theme of Tawheed in a very distinctive manner from most other passages of the Holy Quran because it covers so many aspects of Tawheed in just four short sentences. It doesn't offer any sort of explanation or argument as certain other passages, rather it simply makes a statement of fact by saying that Allah is one, absolute and incomparable to anyone or anything. For example, in Surah al maidah Allah specified that it is his disbelief to call Jesus the son of Allah. But here in Surah Ikhlas, he simply declared that he doesn't give birth at all. Thus all false belief regarding any son or daughter of Allah are shattered.